Freakers Ball, right here live on Real Liberty Media dot com. Uh, this is Friday night here, uh, September eighteen, two thousand and twenty. September eighteen. Yeah, that means that uh, this is the last Freakers Ball of two thousand twenty of this messed up, messed ass year. Um, <laughs> so any hi and howdy and welcome to all the people out there. Uh, tuned in from the various places you may be tuned in from, whether that be right here on reallibertymedia.com on the Freakers Ball show page, or maybe over there on vaughn.live slash reallibertymedia for the video stream, direct video stream, Real, R R L M R Radio X Y Z for the audio stream, and the audio stream goes out various other places, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, down, I'm not, I wasn't trying to break Vinny's heart. Vinny never came into my my realm of consciousness there when I was saying that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, Miss Girl. Hey. Hey, how you doing? All right. Good. That's good to know. It's not the last weekend in September, Grim. No, it's, I didn't say it was the last week of September. I said it's the last week of summer. Oh, summer. I thought you said September. And, you know, maybe I did say September. I think you, I don't know, because a bunch of other people are saying, what? 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 No, oh, no, no, no. No, last week in the summer is what I meant to say. Um. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh. Gotcha. But, you know, this stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. It does. Yeah. Yes, it does, indeed. Yeah. So how's it going? Oh, it's going fine, fine and dandy out over here in my my area of the world, and uh, good. Hopefully, yours is going well as well. Yeah, hang it in there, you know. Good, 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 good. That's good to know. Yep. Yep. So, um, dying and Fandy, Rob says. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh. Right there. So, uh, anyway, I was just saying hi and howdy to the uh, peoples tuning mm-hmm. in. And, uh, I, I had made a comment prior to coming on live here. Well, not prior to coming, prior to starting the official show okay. <laughs> about Donna. I said, oh, my Donna. I, oh, 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 no, not my Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, so she asked me if I was trying to break Vinny's heart. No, uh, <laughs> sorry, if, if Vinny, if you heard that, uh, well, you weren't here to hear it, so, but <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not trying to steal your gal. I, I wouldn't do that. Well, actually, actually, I would. <laughs> actually, I've wound, I've wound up with a lot of women now. I wound up with a lot of women that way, stealing them from friends. <laughs> Which is, as I know, it's a horrible thing to do. But yeah, yeah, you know, those are the ones you're hanging out with, and what can yeah. I, what what can I say? <laughs> You're just a stud muffin, Graham. Oh, the scoundrel. <laughs> I think is what it comes <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's not anyone's gal. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Didn't All mean right. to imply. I was. I had an assumption there. I don't know why. But anyway, I'm sure Vinny's fine with it all. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to go. Uh, me too, Donna. All right. That's the way to go. Yeah. Anyway, hi and howdy to all the folks here in the chat. Yeah. I see, I see Donna, I see Rob, I see you and Rome's and Rob works. Did I mention him already? Uh, Cowboy Deck. Hey, Cowboy, good to have you back here with us. It's been a while. Um, and I saw Chloe and Hansel earlier, and I know Kate's around, hanging around. Hey, Kate, how you doing, honey? Um, I don't know who else is here talking. Meister Brown, Mooster, Meister Woodman. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a hell of a link you posted in there, Kate, uh, uh, Chloe, excuse me, uh, mess that one up, all right, <laughs> okay, and anybody else that's listening that that I don't see chatting, hi, I missed you, because I didn't see you chatting, so, um. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. that works, yeah, so anyway, I, I, I went down to the post office there today, yeah, and, uh, somebody, somebody sent me some real nice little stuff, I did. You did. That's right. And I, I did. And, and it's cool, cool stuff. I she sent me a, a silver round, a uh, 
Route 66 silver around there. Yep. And it's really cool. It's got the the symbol, you know, the little, I don't know what you call that, badge Hold thing. Over. Yeah, the little badge thing that says Route 66 on it. Got yep, that. Yep, yep. And uh, the, the, the obverse has another cool photo. And then some stickers. Oh, these stickers, yep. man. I, I, I am a BMFS <laughs> fan officially. Now, yes, you so, are official um, now. <laughs> and one from John, a John Prime sticker, and uh, yep. and what was that other one? It was a weird one. Joe um, Bonamassa. What, what did it say yes. on it? Rare and vintage. That was that was that was the uh, the, the pin, right? Yeah, that, the that's pin. The, the pin. That's the Joe Bonamassa. Oh, but there was another sticker there too that didn't have a like an artist's oh. name on it. I, I forget what it was. it's out in the kitchen. And I, I, oh, okay. So I can't. I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, very <laughs> cool stuff. A couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Very cool stuff. So thank you all. Yeah, thank no, you you're so much welcome. For, yeah. for that, yeah. Um, so uh, birthday still going on. <laughs> it's only yeah. been it's only been like what three weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and my sister sister sent me a text a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. She said, "Did you get these things? Or did you get two things?" I said, "Well, I got one thing." Mm-hmm. And and she's oh well the other one, it was on delay so you'll still be getting it so your birthday's still going on. <laughs> oh cool. Okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so some something else coming somewhere down the line, apparently. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I thought that Route 66 round was pretty cool. Oh, it's awesome! It's it's beautiful. It's uh, yeah. You know, it's sealed in the plastic. It's got the official uh, Apmex deal there. So. Yeah. Yeah, collector's item. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I got one for myself too. But cool. <laughs> I just got it as to have it as a silver round, basically. I mean, Route 66 is a cool thing. Oh you know, yeah, you live a... what 50 yards away from the thing or something. Right, yeah, it's, it's right out, it's right out, right outside there, right outside my window. Right, so. right. <laughs> and that's always a good thing to give people, you know, silver. Oh yeah, silver is be- beautiful, awesome. You can't it's really wonderful, go wrong wonderful, there. Wonderful stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I love that. that. That's 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 great. Mm-hmm. Um, See what else going on? Anything else interesting going on in your life or mine? Oh, you know, my college son. Oh, that's right, your your Corona boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he got he had to have his first COVID test when he was at work because one of his supervisors tested positive for COVID. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he had that done. It was the nose one, the nose swab one, right? Mm. And it was negative. Great. All right. So, all right. So then, anyway, he's been living in this house with four other people since June. Yeah. And someone else at his work tested positive, and also one of the roommate's cousins came into the house, and he tested, like, positive, like, the next day or something. Okay. So all the whole house had to be tested, right? <laughs> and he was feeling like shit last weekend, he said. So he went Monday and got the test. Results Tuesday. He was positive, but he said, Mom, I don't know because it, it's not the same test. Yeah. It's like this rapid test, they call it. Okay. Like, so I don't know if what to think, you know. Well, they, 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 there's several different tests that they use, I know, like four yeah. four different ones, and um, I, none of them are accurate. They're, they're, all, they're all crap, because um, uh, you could test positive and then negative with, within an hour of each other, if, if you do right. it. Uh, so, I, I mean, their, their tests are pretty much useless, um, so I, I don't even know why they're doing them, but whatever. Um, but he came back positive. Yeah. And then did so, he go go for another? Another test? Yeah. No, no. Oh, because He's usually positive. He's got a quarantine now. Well, usually after testing positive, they have you go back and 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 see if you're still test positive or not. Well, I don't know. I have no idea if it's real or fake. I have no idea. I don't know. He's not sick. He, it's he fake to me, sick Chloe. To me. He's, not, he's not coughing. He doesn't have shortness of breath. <laughs> So I don't know what he has, if he's actually has anything. I do not know. Yeah. But according to that test, he is positive. Go ahead, yeah, whatever. Cold, flu, food poisoning, who knows? I don't know, but um, yeah. 
The only thing he says is he feels tired. Well, I don't know. I'm always tired, so what's that to say? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I don't and, know. I, you know, it just doesn't make sense that... Okay, so they quarantine. They must have to be retested again. I would think. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, okay. let me, let me okay. uh, banter with Chloe for a second. She says okay. that I don't fool her for a second, and she says that I know it's real. I don't know it's real, and I actually, uh, I have serious. I'm not saying that it's not for sure not real. Uh, that they haven't created something. But they've never created anything to justify any of what they have done over this stupid crap. Now, if they wanted to go ahead and start working on a, some kind of a cure or vaccine for whatever it is they created in those labs, fine, do it. But all this other stuff that they've done is absolute freaking nonsense. All these shutdowns and lockdowns and uh, uh, just destroying people's livelihoods. And, and and this stupid mask crap. I mean, come on. If you want people to wear a mask, suggest they wear a mask. Don't say, you must wear a mask or we're going to come in for your money and throw you in jail. I'm not backtracking. I, 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 I am not backtracking. Uh, if you think I am, then prove it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I don't know. Uh, I, I, I mean... I don't believe it's real, but I have no proof that it's not real. Um, the fact is that they do create bioweapons all the time. Uh, so if, if one is either either escaped or was released intentionally um, as maybe a test, because it's certainly not as virulent as, as <laughs> all this crap that they're saying. It's, it's all these people, they whatever they say, 200,000 people killed, um, uh, that's a that's a bunch of nonsense. So those numbers are all made up. That that that's, that is total crap. Uh, these two hundred or what was it three billion cases? I forget even what the number is now. Just nonsense. It, and it doesn't matter. Cases don't mean a damn thing. Uh, it, the people walking around. Oh, I might have cancer. I'm walking around. I, I'm I'm non. What, what do you call it? Um, I don't have any symptoms, unsymptomatic, asymptomatic uh, for cancer. But I might have it, right? Uh, so put me in the cancer ward, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, what the hell? This is stupid. Oh, God. All right, sorry, Moose. I, I just had to answer that. So. Oh, no, that's okay. That's all right. Um, so... They're doing this thing with the quarantining and all this crap. He's able to still do online classes. Um, I would assume they have to be retested again to figure out if they have it or not. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, yeah, no, I know. But, but um, <laughs> yeah, so, but how's he feeling now? It's been a week or I whatever. Haven't, I, I haven't heard anything. I mean, I would. I haven't talked to him for. I, mean, I talked to him yesterday. He was fine. Okay. So. And, and how's the, how's the food holding out? Oh, I'm sure good. He hasn't said anything, so. <laughs> All right. That's uh, good. That's good. He said thank you. Good. That's good. So. Yeah. Um. For those of you that don't know Moose Potter, her son, and I guess his roommates too, uh, a bunch of food. So. Yeah, I had to um, go there because he couldn't, supposedly, he's not supposedly, can't go anywhere. So, went to Aldi's. Aldi's is awesome, I have to say. And, and that that makes for a very cool mom. And actually, his friends told him I was cool. His roommate's friends. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> he texts me, he's like, they say you're a really cool mom. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's cool. That works for me. Uh, I was glad you. to be called <laughs> cool by some 20-somethings. Right. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Anyway. So that's been going on, but other than that, not really much um, of anything else. All right. So. No, that's, that's good. That's good. That's great. Yeah. Um, let's see. Anything? Nah, nothing really else going on here. I, I put my, uh, my, my new circuit breaker in last week, and it's been perfect, so... Um, 
my my old oh, one, the, the one that burnt out, I was, I was I'd been having problems with for a while. So uh, I should have expected that, and on, and on the uh, lower amperage circuit um, that I was running it on a 20 amp when it should be a 30 amp, I was getting you know uh, the circuit breaker would pop every now and then. Uh, well, whatever it was doing a fast fast cycle, you know, like if the AC went off and then came back on within like right. a, short, a very short time, that would, that would pop the circuit breaker. But now now with this new one, it's perfect. <laughs> Anyway, um, last week, and we should have talked about this last week, but we didn't, because, uh, I don't know, I just never got around to it or whatever, uh, but um, the woman, uh, Diana Rigg, uh, died mm-hmm. last week on uh, yep. se- se- September 10, um, which was Thursday of last week, uh, and uh, she she was the, uh, in the Avengers, she, she was Emma Peel. Uh, yep. Um, Emma Peel, yes. Um, and then she, apparently she was in some other shows um, after that. I mean, because that was like a long time ago. The, the Avengers was in the 60s. Uh, mm-hmm. But she was apparently somebody called Medea and Olena Tyrell. Yep. Uh, which I don't I don't Olena know what those Tyrell, are. Olena um, Tyrell, Game of Thrones. Okay. And whatever Medea is, I don't know what that is. I'm not sure on that one. Okay. Well, anyway. She died last week at uh, age of 82, and um, for a lot of young males watching television in the 60s, mm-hmm. Emma Peel was something to um, watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Avengers was okay, but you know she 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 was she was the deal. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna start we're gonna start with uh, a song by the band Cake. Um, okay. Featuring uh, images and, and video clips of, of Miss Emma Peel. There you go. What do you see, Matt? Oh, yeah. If it seems to be real, it's illusion. Ronnie James Dio there, a heaven and hell, Black Sabbath. Yes, indeed. Before that, oh, by the way, rest in peace, Ronnie. Mr. Deal. Yep, he died a few years back. Before that, we had Jimi Hendrix doing If Six Was Nine. And the reason, and well, not just, I don't really need a reason to play Jimi Hendrix, because I love Jimi Hendrix, um, as I do Ronnie James Deal. Uh, but uh, Jimi Hendrix died 50 years ago today over there in London. Yeah, 50 years ago, man. Wow. Anyway, we kicked it off there with a uh, little tribute to Emma Peel by uh, Cake, short skirt, long jacket, uh, and a bunch of shots from her in the Avengers. So uh, great stuff, great, great, great music to get us going here today on the Fringers Ball. Yep. Yep. Just wonderful stuff. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today. Either, either today or sometime in the past, and they just finally got around to saying, "All right, she, <laughs> she's dead." I mean, I mean, you know, there's been so many rumors about her death, right, right, going on over the uh, many, many, many months. Uh, now, Apparently, so. it's real. Apparently, this time for sure, it's real. Uh, yep. they, they're they're at least admitting it. And saying, "Yeah, this is all this is all real." Um, so, uh, and, and and if I, I go through my Twitter timeline at this point in time, oh, there there is there what? is uh, yeah uh, there there is nothing there except R B G posts. Um, so, uh, I guess right. it's I guess it's a big deal to me. To me, not so much. I mean, I didn't. I don't care about the SCOTUS in the first place. Um I, I know for a lot of I know for a lot of people it, it is a, a big deal though. Um and you know there's gonna be all these political wranglings going on uh, oh, yeah. over who to put in there in her place or whatever it is. Um Kate posted That should be fun. Oh t- terrific fun. Uh Kate posted a link or a tweet or something earlier uh saying some something saying that um, 
they have to put somebody in before election day. Uh, apparently, they do. Uh, yeah, it's got to be a full cast of characters there in the SCOTUS. Um, in order, like, if there's a, a problem like there was with uh, Bush and Gore, and the Supreme Court had to decide. Yeah. So apparently, that's that's the deal. Is they got to get somebody in there prior to the election. Um, je- really? Just, yeah, just in case that happens. Um, wow. So, uh, I, I don't okay. know. Okay, well, I didn't know that. Which, which, if that's the case, that'd be like the fastest uh, uh, confir- yeah. confirmation. Nomination, confirmation, nomination, confirmation. Yeah, that I that I'd ever seen. Um, if 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 that is the case, and wow. I, don't know, I, I imagine they're gonna want a woman. In there because that was a woman that died, uh, so they'll probably want to replace her with a woman. Which whatever, like I said, I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I the, the the thing is the whole SCOTUS thing. I I, I don't. I, it doesn't make any difference. It's stupid. Um, it, it, you know those those guys that sit up there and and make these these big all encompassing decisions. You know, going way back, hundreds, well, not hundreds, but, uh, you know, 100, 100 plus, 150 years, um, mm-hmm. making making these decisions that people still reference today and say, well, this is the law, the, these people said this, this group of people, mm-hmm. uh, say, but, and, and they all say, well, these are the uh, conservative guys, and these are the liberal guys, and why does that matter? Why does that matter? Um, if they're conservative or liberal, if they are supposedly analyzing whatever comes up to them against the Constitution, mm-hmm. then then it, it should be very clear what the result right. is for any decision or opinion, because uh, really that's what the, all they do is give opinions. Uh, they they don't yeah. they don't say this is how this is. They say our opinion is this. And then everybody follows that as if it was a written law somewhere, which it's never supposed, whatever they do is never supposed to uh, be a written law, but uh, because they're not allowed to make law, only only the uh, the Congress is, is allowed to make law, the Senate and the House of Representatives. They're the only ones that are allowed to make law. The Supreme Court is not allowed to make law. The President is not allowed to make law. They, they, so they're only allowed to interpret uh, what they believe the Constitution says. So if they interpret it in a way that just seems crazy, like they did with the Obamacare thing, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, and 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 so that you know they switch sides too. Some of those guys that you think are supposedly conservatives, they'll vote with the, with the, with the liberal side. And, and and so the oh there's a balance it's got to be you know five to four or whatever it, to, to me it's all ridiculous I, well, who cares these bunch of morons up there and siding with pedophiles uh, I, I, they do <laughs> <laughs> they made they made a lot of decisions on that on that matter um, okay yeah because and and whether I agree with those decisions or not uh, would really depend on which one because. Um, you know, whatever. I, I, whether you know, I don't like those people, but they still have rights, right? Um, so, and anyway, so she died, and something. It's going to be whatever. That's going to be the big discussion over the coming whatever amount of time. Yeah. And then, uh, if somebody gets nominated, uh, then that'll be like, oh, we can't take that person to. Do it. That person disagrees with our ideology. Oh, really? God. <laughs> I know it's crazy. Oh boy, fun, fun, fun! Oh. Never stops. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it just doesn't stop. It's awesome. Oh God! Isn't it? It is. Well, I got a bunch of I got a bu- I got a, I got a bunch of Corona stories here. All uh, right. And. um Hell, what the hell? Let's just start with this one. Unless you got something else good to start with. Uh, not right at this moment. Okay. From the telegraph.co.uk, face masks 
could be giving COVID-19 immunity. Giving, you, you could get immune, you could be immune from COVID by wearing a face mask. Now, I have to call immediately. Bullshit! <laughs> Okay. But that's a study here. showed here. Uh, it says mask wearing might also be reducing the severity of the virus and ensuring that a greater portion of new inf infections are asymptomatic. Which, again, if you're asymptomatic, who cares? You got nothing. All right. So, anyway, it says here face masks may be inadvertently giving people COVID-19 immu Im immunity and making them get less sick from the virus, academics have suggested, in one of the most respected medical journals in the world. Uh, the commentary published by New England Journal of Medicine advances the unproven but promising theory that universal face mask wearing might be helping to reduce the severity of the virus and ensuring a greater por proportion of new infections are asymptomatic, which is, uh, again, just nonsense asymptomatic. Uh, all right, if, if this hypothesis is borne out, if, big if, uh, academics argue, then universal mask wearing could become a form of variolation, which is inoculation. <laughs> I don't know why they used variolation there as a word rather than inoculation that would be that would generate immunity and thereby slow the spread of the virus in the u.s and elsewhere but you haven't heard much about this have you this thing here um no. because well not only is it unproven but as i i believe it was kate uh mentioned when i posted the link there in the chat one day uh last weekend i think um that uh there ain't no money they, they can't make money off people wearing masks they, 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 they can only make money off of mass poisoning, I mean, uh, vaccinations of, of everybody. So they, they wouldn't want this to be true, even if it were true, which I don't believe it is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway. Oh, Rob Works posted a link here. George Soros has 200 organizations to attack America. At least 200. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Uh, did I? Did I? Okay. I did not add that in. Okay, let me go back there and reopen it because I didn't add it in. <laughs> what now? Um, nothing. Just looking at that. Just wow. Well, you know the thing is, there's so much nonsense out there that I mean, how do you know? How how, how can you even possibly hope to decipher any of this crap? Um, for example, mm -hmm. Doctor Fraudji, Doctor Fraudji. Uh, yeah. on thehill.com, says, attempt to get coronavirus herd immunity would result in enormous death toll. So, it, although this has worked for every other disease throughout the history of time, going back to the dawn of history, <laughs> Fauci says that this one would be horrible. Um, so, yeah, Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, discussed herd immunity with Matthew McConaughey on on Instagram. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Fauci said allowing what? the virus. Yeah, I I, I don't. <laughs> Come on now. Might might as well uh, uh, you know uh, discuss it with Madonna. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, so, what the fuck? Fauci said allowing the virus to sweep through the country unchecked to achieve herd immunity would result in totally unacceptable number of deaths. If everyone contracted it, and even with a relatively high percentage of people without symptoms, the asymptomatics, a lot of people are going to die, Fauci said. 
Well, you know what, Fauci? A lot of people are going to die regardless of this freaking thing that you're calling a virus. So herd immunity happens when a large portion of the population becomes immune to a virus, which they're trying to tell you there's really no immunity. You could get it and then be be over it and be well and then get it again. So <laughs> according to them, which I, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. You don't anyway. know. And they say, oh, well, it's good if you get it in some ways because then you develop antibodies. Right, but that, now they say they only last so long. Yeah, right. Which, which, which is either nonsense or this is um, a highly engineered thing. Right. Um, right. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, like I said, I, I don't know how you make sense of any of this stuff because I don't know. Uh, you know, one this guy will come out and say this, and then you got a bunch of other people saying something else. Um, I, I don't believe uh, this this whole thing here. Uh, that, 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 uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't believe any of it. I don't know. There's, there's so much contradictory, uh, reports and these are the top scientists here. Those are the top scientists there. Uh, and then, and then there was this, uh, one, uh, virologist over there in China, this Chinese woman, mm -hmm. uh, who said that the COVID-19 was made in a Wuhan laboratory in Wuhan laboratory. Um, so uh, she was posting her information over there on the on the Twitter, <laughs> and they and, and they said, "Oh no, 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 no! We can't allow you to post stuff, even though you worked there in this lab and you, uh, you're familiar with this virus uh, better than anybody here on Twitter. We can't allow you to have this information out there that that contradicts the the, the official global globalist agenda." So they suspended the account of the Chinese virologist who claimed that it was the COVID-19 was manufactured in a laboratory. Dr. Li Ming Yan, a former researcher at the Hong Kong School of Public Health, uh, went dark on the platform after, after she accused China of covering up evidence that the deadly virus came from a lab in Wuhan. They also don't want people to know this truth. Also, that's why I got suspended. I got suppression, and I am the target of the Chinese Communist Party wants to disappear, um, which that's probably true. She's out there saying these things. The Chinese Communist Party um, not happy <laughs> with somebody pointing the finger back at them, uh, whether that's accurate or not, which I, I, I you know, the Chinese played their part. But uh, it was the Department of Defense that created this crap, and and they're they're the ones that were uh, actively working with that Wuhan lab. Lab. So uh, anyway, um, so she was talking to uh, Tucker Carlson apparently on this here, and Carlson said, "I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt, so I'm going to assume you're not an anti-Chinese racist." Which I think she is Chinese. Uh, anyway, so it's not clear why Twitter would shut you down or why you're being ignored by the rest of the U.S. media. Well, I think it's plainly obvious why she's being ignored by the rest of the U.S. media, uh, but that's just me. So Twitter declined to comment. Um, <laughs> Imagine that. So, so the whistleblower, the collector of the whistleblower, released a paper on Monday on the Open Access Repository website Zen Note uh, that uh, she says backs up her claim and shows how the virus could be conveniently created in a lab setting in six months or less. Uh, the paper was also co-authored by two others, uh, which claims to note how SARS-CoV-2 shows biological characteristics that are inconsistent with a naturally occurring zoonotic virus. So, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you said, you know, um, anybody that comes out and, and speaks at all against this globalist agenda gets immediately slammed in, in, in the yeah. hardest, hardest way possible. Right. And, um, and it doesn't matter what, what the thing is. It could be, it was all those uh, doctors saying uh, the HCQ, the hydroxychloroquine, um, uh, actually works, and they have proof that it works, and they've used it, and it's and it's it's healed their patients. Um, 
Uh, it also works as a prophylactic type thing. Uh, so I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's all such craziness, but uh, yeah. if you see this, if, well, you don't work in an office right now, but suppose someday you do work in an office and, mm-hmm. and, and you come across something like this, just kick it. Just kick it real hard. You'll probably get fired. Keep quick. You'll probably get fired, but you know that I think it's I think, I think it's a necessary thing to do. Mask enforcing humanoid robots set to invade office spaces. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as some Wall Street banks, this is on Activist Post, by the way, uh, as some Wall Street banks have summoned traders and other employees back to their offices, their ability ability to enforce social distancing measures will be challenging unless human-like mask-detecting robots are deployed. Pepper, designed by SoftBank Robotics, is the world's first social humanoid robot able to recognize faces and basic human emotions. The robot stands about 47 inches high, uh, uses optical sensors and artificial intelligence to recognize if people are wearing masks. Uh, Pepper features voice interaction to warn people if they're not wearing masks, telling them, you always have to wear masks properly. Uh, The robot then identifies someone responding to the request to put their mask on, and it then says, thank you for having put on your mask. Creepy. Creepy. The idea of having a humanoid robot patrolling office buildings, maybe trading or maybe trading floors or research departments searching for mask violations makes a whole lot more sense compared to employing humans, which are more costly to do the, the, the same job. Plus, why have a low-level employee looking over traders' shoulders as sensitive data could be on trading terminals? Well, let me tell you right now, I can hack that robot and look over your shoulder much more accurately than a human could. (laughs) That's another story. Uh, uh, Pepper can even alert management of repeated non-mask offenders. Oh, you bare faces! (laughs) Now, tell me that ain't creepy. Um, it's creepy. It is creepy. <laughs> it's freaking creepy, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Mask wearing or mask detecting robots. Uh, robot snitches is, is what that is, what that comes down to. Uh, and want one more, and then we'll get to another set, and we'll come back okay. talking about something else. Because okay. I, I just want to share this one because I, cause I, 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 I like it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't. I don't know where um, how this guy thought of this, but but to me, it's a, it's a terrific thing, and, um, and uh, it's not the one about the U.S. flag guy. That was that was that was. I thought he was kind of stupid, but um, here it is. Man spotted wearing live snake as a mask on a city bus. Oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so, transportation officials in a British city responded to a viral photos from a municipal bus by reminding residents that snake skin is not acceptable material for face masks, especially when it's still attached to the snake. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the photos snapped aboard a Manchester bus show a man sitting aboard the vehicle with a live snake wrapped around his neck and mouth. Uh, a witness told the Manchester Evening News the man initially appeared to be wearing a really funky mask until the state snake started to move around. It was definitely entertaining. Um, <laughs> the photos the photos show the man was not wearing a face mask underneath the snake. Why would he? He's got a snake. That's a mask. It's a face covering. <laughs> it's a face covering. Uh, transport for the greater Manchester Manchester representatives said passengers are required to wear face masks on city buses to protect them from the bullshit called COVID-19 planned endemic. Uh, this doesn't need to be a surgical, surgical mask. Passengers can make their own or wear something suitable, such as a scarf or bandana, the representative told CNN. While there is a small degree of interpretation that can be applied to this, we do not believe it extends to the use of snakeskin 
on a live snake. <laughs> you think? <laughs> oh God. Yeah, he's in intensive care with something there, Rome's. I don't I don't think it's Corona. But that's me. That's me. Don't take don't take my word as gospel. <laughs> Uh, I know I'm in the minority, but it's not a small minority, really. Anyway, we're going to play some more music here. Okay. Okay, this is uh, some guy from Austin, Texas. Oh, yeah, that's the who there for Mr. Cowboy Tech, the seeker. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, <laughs> Right before that, we had Fort Moose Girl, Partners, Sandstone, doing Appalachian Girl. Yeah. And we kicked it off with Gary Clark Jr. there with Bright Lights. Oh, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Um, let's see. <laughs> oh, it's not desolate here. JJ's uh, St. Louis are saying uh, that he thinks that Moriarty is desolate. It's not desolate. It's just tiny. That's all. <laughs> We're we're a little we're a little place eighteen hundred eighteen hundred population you know, um, so yeah. <laughs> oh man. So I found this video. Okay. From twenty sixteen. Okay. Moriarty. Oh, you did. Yeah. All right. Well, then what is it? It's just a uh, drive down Route sixty six. Downtown Moriarty, New Mexico, 7-4-2016. Okay. Is that sign that has the, the Moriarty in cursive there still? Yeah, yeah, it's still there. Do they, oh, cool. they, show, do they show the water tower? Uh, let's see here. They show a park, and then they show a gas station. Yeah, the water tower's at it's the park. It's 4th of July, so people are, yeah, people got their flags and their trucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know the uh, well, on on holidays such as the Fourth of the July. The windmill thing. Windmill. Oh, that's on someone's truck. I don't know about any windmill. Yeah, um, that's on someone's truck. All right, uh, but yeah, there's uh, a water tower. Okay, I okay. see the water. Okay, uh, but on on things on holidays like the Fourth of July or Memorial uh -huh. Day, uh, those kind of things, they do a parade down Route 66. Oh, okay. Down Route 66. And the parade is just people in the, you know, in their pickup trucks or uh, that, and then you get the fire guy, fire engines, and the police mm -hmm. guys, and people on horseback, and uh, there's just a like sixty six on Route sixty six. Yeah, there is. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think that's something else now. It might be a Conoco. Okay. It might be a Conoco now. Um, okay. But yeah, Philip sixty six. Sure, why not? Um, I mean, there, there's several gas stations here. There's a park with a gazebo. Yeah, that's the, the city park, Moriarty City it Park. It looks like there's some, they may have music there sometimes. Yeah, whatever. I don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a Wells Fargo Bank. Oh, yeah, there's, that's my bank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's my bank. There's a restaurant. Which El one? Rays. El, oh, that, that's gone now. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, this is yeah. from 2016, so... Yeah, yeah, they went out of business. And that's, oh, okay. uh, yeah, the one uh, next to it, uh, I forget the name of that one, that one out of business, too. Um, oh, darn. Yeah, there was uh, several, you know, of those main main drag stories that, or uh, stores or businesses that, uh, businesses circulate a lot here. Um, oh, okay. You know, it's a small town, hard to, I mean, if you're coming in here thinking you're going to make your fortune... Um, you're you're in the wrong place. <laughs> and the Pennsylvania <laughs> Festival. Oh yeah, Pennsylvania Festival. That's that's a great time. There is a film. There it just I just did Moriarty, New Mexico, on the YouTube, and it came up with all these videos. Yeah, yeah, and then and they select a. Pinto Bean Queen. Queen. All right. <laughs> Which, Hell yeah. I don't know if you really want to go out with her. I mean, she's the Pinto Bean <laughs> Queen. She'll <laughs> be farting all night long. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, uh, Moriarty is known as the Pinto Bean capital of of uh, the world. Wow. 
Cool. Yeah. Looks like a good time, Graham. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> For the kiddos, anyway, because they throw candy out. And, stuff, uh, and, you know. and, and the uh, the uh, Moriarty High School is uh, the Pintos. Oh, oh okay. Uh, that's that the, makes uh, sense, you know, then. That's okay. their mascot, you know, like... Right. I don't know right. what your 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 high school mask. You know, back in high my, my high school was. But is is the mascot a horse or a bean? Like. <laughs> it's a horse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's the pinto bean queen. That would be an honor, I would think. Oh, for the gassiest of all. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice That's little town. I, I I like the town. It's a good mm-hmm. town. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So. All yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's you know other than that but that little bit there, not much really going on though. Well, no, there's there's I mean, no, there's not. <laughs> there's not. <laughs> and you like that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. I don't want a lot going on. <laughs> what kind of town would that be if there was a bunch of stuff going on? It'd be a city, uh, which it is actually technically yeah. technically a city, but uh, right, yeah, it's the city of Moriarty. So yes, yeah, and some people like that and want that. Sure, that's why we live here. Right. Well, um, some of that's why some of that's why people that moved here intentionally live here. Those, right. that, those that were born here probably are, are you know, getting the hell out. Yeah. But but there's been big sports stars from here too. That, oh, okay. You know that that graduated from Moriarty High School. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Yeah. So I, I can't name any of them right now, but but I, but, <laughs> That's but, <all> right. <laughs> but, uh, but I know there are some. Um, <laughs> so you can probably research that one. Um, yeah. 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 So do you like spam? Uh, I don't hate it, but the I don't. Meat. The meat. Spam. Yeah, I don't. I don't hate it, but I don't buy it. Um, it's 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 kind of nasty, but if you fry it up, I there, don't like it. My mom used to get us to try to eat it. She used to fry it up in a pan. We yeah. still didn't like it. You have to fry it up. Fry it up in a cast iron pan, um, and you get it nice and crispy, and and you eat it while it's hot. Then it's okay. I, I mean, I. I, it would be good in like a um, survival bunker. Oh yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm talking about it because spam sales sizzle sky high during pandemic. Because people are ready for the the end and of the this world. Is from, yeah, this is from Care11.com. Yeah. News station out of Minneapolis, and the story is in Austin, Minnesota, which is where Hormel is. Okay. So say what you will about spam. However, this Austin, Minnesota grown pork product packaged neatly under a pull tab has always been about efficiency and affordability. It was created 83 years ago by our then president, Jay Hormel, who was looking for a way to provide a convenient, affordable protein that could be used and shelf stable as well. Right. The senior brand manager, um, brand manager for Hormel Foods Grocery Products, Brian Willis, said. It gained popularity as it was sent to soldiers all over the world and became part of a World War II diet for many. As a lot of those soldiers and GIs came home after the war, they brought that back with them. The popularity and growth of using this affordable canned meat protein was something that continued to grow over the past the last 80 years. Uh-huh. And it says, um, he also added that a, Hormel, a lot of Hormel products have been born during times of hardship. So apparently people are stocking up on this because it does have a very long shelf life. Yeah, I'm looking at it here. I, I just uh, did a search on uh, DuckDuckGo here, Spam, uh-huh. and they show a bunch of cans of it and prices on the side there. Uh, $3, yeah. $3, basically, uh, mm-hmm. for for a can of Spam, 12-ounce 12 ounce, 12 ounce okay. can of Spam. Right. Um, That's pretty – it's not – $3? How big of a can? 12 ounce. Oh, 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 so, a pound? A pound? No, no, no. Uh, a pound is sixteen. So uh, three, oh, three, three, okay. three, three quarters of a, a three, three quarters of a pound. Okay. 
So I, I don't know well, if that's three dollars. Yeah, but I think f- people go. They like it a lot because of the the long shelf life. Oh sure, that's what I said. They're probably using it in their, uh, you know, their their their, their doomsday their their, yeah. their doomsday bunkers. <laughs> I don't know how many people actually have them. I to tell you the truth. I don't well, know. whatever, and they put it in their whatever their long term food storage thing. Right. Yeah. 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 I don't like the stuff. I mean, if I was starving, yeah, I I'd eat it. Yeah, I you know I I you know bought some some number of years ago just to see if I could eat it, and it was like I said, if you uh, if you fry it up real nice and and crispy, then it's not too bad. Um, right. I mean, I haven't tried it for a really long time because I was a kid when I last tried it, and I knew I didn't like it. Yeah, there's there's other options out there, better options. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you can only eat so much tuna. I I, I do get this uh, canned chicken. Um, it's not like a canned chicken. It's chicken, you know, like would be um, for you know making sandwiches out of or something. They're bigger. I get it on uh, on uh, boxed, um, which isn't too bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not too bad, but it's not cheap either. It's like five bucks or something for a can. Oh, okay. Um, but it's bigger than a tuna can. So, uh, oh, okay. I yeah. mean, there are other there are other options out there. I've seen like roast beef in a can, and oh yeah, they have that stuff. Yeah, yeah various other things. Um, so spam, while okay, it, it's. I understand it's a good, it's very shelf stable, and you can store it for twenty years, and you're fine with it. Um, and I, I, as far as like losing flavor, that's not really an op or an issue. Right. No. <laughs> so uh, yeah, all right, good spam. All right, spam and Twinkie. It's the sales are off the charts. Yeah. Well, after after the after the nuclear war, spam and Twinkies will be your diet. <laughs> Cause, awesome. Because Twinkies last forever, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or I guess maybe if you could find some old uh, McDonald's hamburgers later on. I was just gonna say McDonald's hamburgers. <laughs> oh my god! They, I was just gonna say that. Oh, they wow. last. They last forever. Forever. And, and they they never they never lose their look. They don't get moldy. <laughs> they just <laughs> they just get cold and hard. Probably I don't know. It's, uh, well, I was just seeing. Gross. Gross. Yeah. Very gross. Very gross. <laughs> <laughs> the buns, too. That's another thing. Yeah. Uh, the McDonald's Weird. buns have enough plastic. Like, what is in that? Uh, yeah. Some some kind of plastic. Grown pork product. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know what that is. No, ground. Is it ground or grown? Oh, he's, he's, he said grown. Grown. Okay. So, I, I don't know. It's. I don't know. It's like hot dogs. Pork leftover, pork leftovers. It's like hot dogs smashed together with twelve ounce thing. And some gelatin. There's a bunch of gelatin and, in the can and, too. And that's that's just gross. <laughs> like that. When you see that as a kid, you're like, ew. What yeah, the hell was that? Some kind of gooey, snotty looking crap. Yeah, it's ew. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I did like I did like the uh, the Monty Python piece on spam. Oh, okay. I don't know what if you recall that? that. Spam, spam, no, spam, spam. Oh, what you got today? Oh, yeah. Well, we got spam and eggs, uh, spam and ham, spam and bacon. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I vaguely uh, remember that. Oh, but you have anything without spam? Well, we got this here. It's got a little less spam. No, I don't want any spam. Well, all we got is these here. <laughs> okay. No, it's been a long time since I heard that that, that uh, skit. Yeah. Uh, it was funny, funny money plays on. Um, <laughs> and the flying <laughs> circus. All right, so uh, uh, f- going right from spam into this this here. Okay. Thousands saw a UFO in New Jersey. It was the Goodyear blimp. Oh God! Oh my God! <laughs> it, said, it was like the opening scene from a movie. Cars pulled over on a busy freeway with everyone gawking in disbelief of what they were seeing. Drivers in New Jersey this week thought a flying saucer was hovering above them, but in reality, it was just another day in 2020, and the UFO was an aircraft from planet Earth. The Goodyear blimp. Uh, oh my God! <laughs> I, one, one of the uh, one of the UFO people I follow on Twitter, they did a like a 
analysis, a thermal analysis of the thing, proving that it was indeed the Goodyear blimp. Um, <laughs> anyway, so understandably, there are a few expletives in these videos. However, a representative from Goodyear confirmed to several news outlets that the famous blimp flew through New York and northern New Jersey to capture footage of the Monday night football game uh, between Pittsburgh Steelers and the New York Giants. In watching these videos, it's understandable how so many thought they were a UFO, and it is it is weird looking in the videos. Oh, uh, I'll watch it, Jadred. I mean, not Jadred, on uh, JD. <laughs> yeah, they they that's right, your insult. All right. Um, yeah, sorry, <laughs> Mulvaney. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's uh, so with just the right light conditions, viewing angle, and reflections, the blimp looked just like a classic flying saucer. I had a similar experience in college when a low-flying saucer-shaped vehicle hovered over our campus at dusk. Students gathered in awe, swearing and shouting that finally the truth was oh out there. <laughs> the truth was out there and coming to our world. But wow. as it got closer, everyone could see it was just a blimp ad advertising a new Chevy vehicle. <laughs> wow. Uh, anyway, so uh, it's, a, it's a pretty funny article. It's worth a read. It's posted on uh, universetoday.com, and uh, here's your link for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's the UFO blimp. <laughs> the UFO, the good, oh, my God. The good UFO blimp. <laughs> All right, this, oh. one will, this, this one will definitely interest you. Okay. Although, it's, uh, when did this come out? It's an older article. Uh, March of 2019. And okay. I, po I posted this there in the chat earlier today, uh, but but it's timely now again uh, because of uh, happenings on the West Coast, all the fires. And oh, crap. right, right. Right. And this is posted on military.com. Okay. Air Force harnessing the power of directed energy. Hello. Yeah, hello. So it says the U.S. Air Force has an unprecedented power to direct energy in a way that serves, protects, and champions freedom. Okay. Right. That's what it's for. From yeah. po mm -hmm. from powerful electromagnetics to electro-optics, there are always ways, or, or they are always exploring new ways to give our war fighters the upper, excuse me, the upper hand, mm -hmm. harnessing the power of electromagnetic spectrum to enable airmen to effectively and affordably strike critical targets at the speed of light. Directed energy also enables experimentation, prototyping, and exploration of material to the non-material solutions that align with force capabilities and strategies. You have to remember this is on military.com, so. Right, right. <laughs> it's... So, uh, yeah, uh, anyway, it's just uh, it's just proof. Anybody that says, oh, they don't have any kind of directed energy weapons. Yes, yes, they do. And yeah, they do. And they admit it. <laughs> yes, they have them. D-E-W, that's what people call them. Yep, the dudes. Direct energy weapon. The do drop-ins. Right. If you've seen any of the footage from the fires... And I know everyone's got these theories on why these trees did not fucking burn up in this raging fires, but how is it possible for that many trees to still be standing? It wasn't a typical wild forest fire because if you look at some of the footage, you'll see. It just doesn't look normal. Like, they sold one guy's stuff in his yard and he had a bolt there he had some kind of shed or something there that was made out of steel right and you can see like where the steel had completely melted and like pooled and hardened you know what i mean mm -hmm. i mean that's intense fire dude it's totally unnatural yeah and it's not for these trees to not be burnt up of all like close by to these homes and yeah. these dwellings that are burned it's it's kind of like they just went, someone went in there and shot something just on buildings and, you know, at homes. Right, right. And just, it, it's just so weird. Well, then there is this other side of the story, too. Okay. Beyond the, the directed energy weapons mm -hmm. on humansarefree.com. 
Arsonists are setting many of the wildfires in the western states. Why? Anyway, it says it's now abundantly clear that arsonists are setting many of the wildfires that are exploding across the western states. Naturally, Oregon fire officials have now officially denied the fires are being set by humans, instead claiming all these fires are Trump's fault because of oh yeah okay because of climate change <laughs> so so not only are the fires trump's fault climate change is trump's fault <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> and i'm sure corona is also trump's fault but but that's that's another story we already talked about all the corona stuff or well, not all of it but a lot plenty um so Trump right, is, no, I agree that, no, I'm sorry, Grim. I agree, Donna, um, green wood isn't going to burn as fast and as fierce or whatever as dried up wood. Right. That's correct. Absolutely. It won't burn at all. Right. So I think her point is, is that's why these trees didn't burn. Oh, no, but I mean, the bark would have burned. Uh, the, 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 if they're pine trees, the pine needles would have burned, certainly. Uh, if there are other kind of trees with leaves, the leaves would have burned. Um, but no, the trees are perfectly fine, just standing there like, fire? What fire? No, make no fire ever, yeah. even. We, 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 yeah. we, we didn't see no fire. Yeah, we're still <laughs> fine. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this goes on to say, in case you're trying to keep track of all this, when terrorists set fire to buildings and cities, that's known as peaceful protesting. But when terrorists set fire in nature, that's called climate change. <laughs> it's, clear, it's clear now that their desperate effort to tear down America, the radical left, you crazy leftists, <laughs> have embraced a scorched earth policy, at least scorched houses, uh, that involves literally attempting to burn down the nation by setting fires. Uh, already, Black Lives Matter terrorists are being arrested and charged after being caught setting fires. The wildfires in Oregon have now displaced half a million residents there. And this is a week ago, I think, this article came out. Yeah, four, 14th, probably. whenever that was. Monday. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, wildfires in Oregon have d displaced half a million residents there. And federal officials are investigating mass arson as the real cause behind these fires. They got the map here, you know, showing all where all the fires are, all the hot spots. Right, right, right. Um, so it, it, it's all throughout the entire West there. It's all just it's burning up. So in addition, videos are already surfacing that reveal how the fires are engineered as weapons against America. Men with chainsaws are cutting down telephone poles to set fires. What? How is that? I, I, I don't know. Maybe I guess the electricity in the wires. If it, but that wouldn't be a telephone pole. That'd be no, a little... because a lot of them poles are coated with like flammable tar. material. With tar. tar, yeah. But but if so they can they can set it on you know put so, an accelerant on there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I don't know, but if but I would think electrical poles would be cut down, but not telephone poles. I don't know. Anyway, so I, 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 they, anyway they 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 think here on this uh, humans are free site. That that uh, this is this is the thing, and they do have evidence showing that there is a lot of arson going on uh, in creating. They have some evidence of that, but there's also been I've seen some people are saying some of these are not set by arsonists, but some have been. So well, right, there's know. always that's been natural fires, right, uh, in these areas, and especially now it's so much worse that they stopped the forest management, which was was helping a lot in preventing fires. When they'd go in, right? And they, and they took that away. Yeah, they took that away. You can't go in and remove the dead wood anymore. It's you like that's you ridiculous. You have to do that, or if, especially if there's all those homes. So I mean, there's there's, there's there, a lot of reasons for these fires. Uh, right. Arsonists, directed energy weapons are two big ones, though. Right. Uh, so big time. Yeah, yeah, big time. So um, yeah. 
I mean, obviously these fucking rioters and these BLM and these anti fox they, they love setting fires. They love fires, dude. Yeah, they will, they will set fire like, to anything. The one video I watched today that I think Trust No One posted or whatever about this guy in California, I guess. I think it was California. Uh -huh. um, it was like a big tractor tire just in the middle of nowhere on a fire. And I don't know if you guys know anything about tires, but it, those burn hard and they're hard to put out. Yeah, yeah. Tractor uh, tire fires are not easy to put out. No, they can burn for years. And it was one of those big tractor. You well, know. Here, tell me, tell me this, tell me this. Yeah. How long has the Simpsons been on? Uh, thirty years. Yeah, well, that tire fire is still burning. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a feature of the show. This big tire fire. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, I guess it's still there. I haven't seen the show in a while, but. <laughs> yeah, they are, JJ. They're super toxic. Uh, oh, um, yeah, all kinds of nasty ass chemicals coming off those things. Yeah, you don't want to be around a burning tire yeah. very long. So, it, it's, I, 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 don't, I think it's a mixture. I mean, it makes sense in Oregon because of all the shit that's happening in Portland. Um,. It makes sense that Oregon, that some of these fires are started in Oregon or got started or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, right. It's crazy. I, I I don't know what to say about arson. I, I'm against it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm against it too. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of arson or any other. No, kind I'm of... not like some pyromaniac person. You know. But since we're talking about Oregon. <laughs> okay. Oregon and karma. All right. On the independent.co.uk, this is uh, from earlier this month. Oregon hunter killed by elk he shot with an arrow the night before. Oh, wow. The night before. <laughs> so. Wow. The, guy, the elk came back for revenge on that motherfucker. Well, no, he was he he, he was an idiot. But here we'll get to that. Oh, okay, never mind. The bow hunter in Oregon was killed on Sunday by an elk he was tracking. Mark David oh, okay. sixty uh, Mark David sixty six wounded a five by five bull elk while hunting on private property in Tillamook on Saturday. Uh, Mr. David set off to find the elk before nightfall, but was unable to track it, according to the Oregon State Police. Oh, okay. The next day, the hunter and the owner of the land continued the search for the elk. They found the wounded animal around 9.15 a.m., and Mr. David attempted to kill it with his bow. The elk charged the hunter and managed to gore him in the neck. Uh, the landowner attempted to help David, but he sustained fatal injuries and died. After oh, wow. after after the attack, the elk was killed, which it was going to be killed one way or the other. Right. And, and its meat was donated to the Tillamook County Jail. Oh, oh well, lucky guys, those are. Uh, yeah, no pr kidding. Prisoners eating some good meat there. Um, so, though, though rare, elks do occasionally cause injury to humans. Well, especially when you're trying to kill them. <laughs> uh, yeah, and if it's injured, how do I mean, you should, for one thing, if you were any good of a bull hunter, you would have shot the beast initially and killed it. Yeah. You wouldn't have had to track it down and when it's semi-injured. Right, and let it suffer overnight and all that. Yeah, come on now, dude. Yeah. So, um, anyway. <laughs> I know bull hunting is a lot more challenging, obviously, than a gun, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. still, you should really know, you know. Make sure you're a good shot, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's no, go to another. He's dead, right? It's, it's dead now. Yeah, they killed it. In... No, he's dead. The guy... Oh, yeah, he's dead. He's dead. Because <laughs> he got gouged, right? Yeah, in the neck. He got gored in the oh, neck. Oh, yeah, probably the, right in the jugular. Probably, yeah. He bled yep. out. He bled out pretty yep. quick. I would have bet. Right. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Weird. Odd. <laughs> yeah. It's weird how some stuff goes down, you know. I don't I, you know. Like I said, <laughs> instant karma there. Right, I guess yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, instant karma, going to get you. Bad ya. luck or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, shit happens, so. Right, um, it does. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, it's, I think it's only fair that every now and then a hunter gets taken out. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it seems like a reasonable thing. Uh, to happen. 
<laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, it, it, if you just look at, at the ratios, uh, it's, I'm sure it's still, you know, way up there on the hunter side. Oh, I'm um, sure it is, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to play another set here. All uh, right, let's do that. <laughs> got to kick off here with the Mr. Trust No One request, Rome's right. request. Uh, apparently, it's Quiet Riot. I, I'm not familiar with this track, though. So All right, then. We will see. So, here we go. <laughs> Wild outro there, Leo. All right, Leo Maraccioli there covering Phil Collins in the air tonight. Uh, was that Phil Collins or was all Genesis? That was Phil Collins. All right, um, <laughs> before that, we had for Mighty Moose Girl. Phil Collins. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, before that, uh, we had for Moose Girl feeding Leroy doing a, tra- a track called Tennessee Devil. And we kicked it off with a uh, Rome's request, Quiet Riot, with a freak flag. Let your freak flag fly! Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's, oh, by the way, hey there, Mr. Behind the Woodshed. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, Hal. <laughs> yeah, you see, yeah. Okay, so I was listening to Clyde Lewis the other day. Okay. And he was talking about Governor Kate Brown of Oregon. Right, right. Talking about her voice. Okay. Anyway, um, he was saying that she sounds like she's from the Midwest. All right. And I said, no, she's not. It's, I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> She sounds like she's trying to be British or something, but she sounds really weird. And um, Clyde was trying to say that I, she sounds like she's from Minnesota. Uh, it's a Minnesota accent, but it isn't. No, you would know. You would know. I would you... know. And so I'm listening to this, and I'm going, no, this does not sound like a Minnesota accent to me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think she is from Minnesota, though. She might be. I don't know. No. I, have no, I have no idea where she's from. No, she was born in Spain. And she, oh, okay. She was born in Spain. All right. In Madrid. And okay. her father was serving the United States Air Force, and she grew up in Minnesota. Oh, wow. She graduated from Moundsville High School in 1978, which is in the cities there. Yeah. Then she went to the University of Colorado in Boulder. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know how she got her freaking accent, but it's not a true Minnesota accent. I'm just saying. Like, I was telling people in the, the, the chat room on Clyde's channel, I'm like, she sound, I'm like, people have told me that I sound like I could be an actor in Fargo, okay? I know what a Minnesota accent sounds like, and that sure, is not one. Sure, sure, sure. So, anyway, they were, they were, he was just ripping her one on that one. Oh, that's easy um, enough to do. What? <laughs> There's so many things, it's easy to pick on whatever. Right, uh, and it's just like, well, yeah, he yeah. lives in Portland, Clyde, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So. so, I don't know what happened, but when these fires first started, um, they were having like 87 mile hour per hour winds and crap going right. through Portland, Oregon. Yeah. And through the rest of Oregon. So, it just fueled these fires and just, you know. Sure. But at the same time, we're, we are talking about direct energy weaponry. Right. And Grimner did a story saying they have this this technology, okay? Right, they do. And they're not just letting it sit there. No, they right? are definitely using it. They are using this technology. This is how people are freaking out going, well, how can my house be burnt and the neighbor's house isn't? Yeah. Or how can my house be standing and the neighbor's across the street is not? Well, you see, I, I, you know, I have I have seen that in natural fires. Well, I have too, and you see that in tornadoes, where a tornado will come through, and the house across the street is perfectly fine, while the the, the other side of the street is totally destroyed. You right. know what I mean? Right, right. And that can happen, but it just seems so. I mean, when you look at some of the footage of these fires, you find it very hard to believe that there wasn't more like damage. Oh, absolutely, you know, absolutely. I mean, I don't, I don't, I've, I've never seen one, so I don't know. 
what it looks like for Sam Grimm. I, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? But it just doesn't look right to me. I don't know why, but it just looks off um, in some way. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely understand. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, it's and we've been talking about scalar weapons and do for a while on this show. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah there's, there's definitely some hijinks going on. Um. Let me look up scanner weapon. Right. Anyway, uh, Hal, uh, damn Van Meter says good evening, Hal. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh. Okay. All right. What'd you find? What'd you see? Uh, okay, real. This is from a, a um, apparently this is from Biblio Tech. Technica? Tech Apple something? I know, Bibliotechnica. Read, read it and weep, and then they have all this information about scalar waves. Okay. It says it started, it all started in 18th century with a Scotsman named James Clerk Maxwell. He was a mathematical genius, and his work led to the development of quantum physics, which later led to Einstein's relativity. Maxwell's questions link electricity and magnetism linked, and he discovered other waves that were higher than normal, Hertzian electromagnetic waves. They are positioned at right angles coming off the electric magnetic wave and are omnidirectional, whereas normal Hertzian electrical mag electro electromagnetic waves are only measured with normal equipment and travel in a straight line. They are also called graphitic waves because they belong to the gravitational field. Maxwell's electromagnetic spectrum went higher than our 3D physical reality and into hyperspace, sorry about that, where the first indiscernible scalar waves exist. They can also be manipulated in various modes, types of modes and frequencies. Anyway, yeah, this is sounds, the start of these, what? That, that, that sounds exactly like what the Air Force has there. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so this has been known about for a very long time. I mean, this is a lot of, I'll, I'll post this link, but it's it's very long. Okay. But it's a lot of information. All right. Um, it's, it, it talks about the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, 70s, present day. Uh, let me just go down the present day. Well, I see why you had uh, trouble pronouncing the name of that website. Yes, <laughs> bibliotech something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, it says in nonlinear mathematics, engineering, and science, the Soviets have led the way since the start, and the West leads the way in computer software and min miniaturization. Um, though at present, the Japanese have joined forces with the Russians to add computerized w components to weaponry. Bearden says, Bearden says that Soviet scalar weapons are capable of destroying the USA, its armed forces, or population quickly and efficiently. These scalar transmitters can also become conventional radars by switching into EM mode. The Rus Russians present old transmitters on their old aircraft, old radar-directed gun sites, and obsolete, quote-unquote, air defense missile sites. If you could cause an earthquake, you can also set it to, say, bring down a single building or a pair of buildings. Uh-huh. So this is what they have their hands on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this. Uh, section 15, disease induction. Ah, yeah. Huh. Wow. It says, Bearden says that scalar beams can also be used to induce diseases by mimicking disease patterns or signatures by recreating them on the scalar carriers. These are also, these are all called quantum potential weapons. Especially designed biological effects can be used for attacking any population with various diseases, even multiple diseases together. He lists the effects to induce instantaneous death, instantaneous death, heart seizure, severe emotional disruption, loss of control of internal functions, diseases, the disabling of the immune system, and even the implantation of thoughts, emotions, or ideas interpre interpreted as a targeted subject as their own. 
Read, read that next sentence. H10... Or 10, 8... No, no, no. Oh, wait. no, no. no there's the, the... also a suicide vibration, which has been used to get rid of people with no evidence. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. There you go. Yeah. This is what they have their hands on. Okay? Even the voice of God has been produced. Wow. Oh, wow. So you're like hearing voices. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that is very... It's going to take you a day or maybe a week to read it. Right. But if you want to know, I mean, this is very in-depth here. Yeah. Information, it looks like. So um, they talk about tons of stuff in this thing. Sure. Wow. Okay. Well, anyway, there's that. Yeah. Um, okay. It's from 2000, so it's 20 years old, but... Yeah, so they so it's there's that, that much. That means this is how long they've had their hands on it. Well, they've had their hands on it since the 30s. Right, but so there's there's so much more they can do now over the last 20 right, years. Right, with the, the improvement of technology and everything. And this obviously this article is 20 years old. So you might want to do you know do another search and <clears throat> try to find a more up to date thing. But this really has a lot of information in it. So sure, sure. Yep. So, yeah, they're using this shit, you guys. I mean... Absolutely. I believe that some of those fires are being started by do Direct energy weapons. Oh, I really sure, do. sure. I really do. I mean, you know, people can sit and analyze it and say, well, this, that, and the other thing, trees are green, and they don't burn as fast. And But like you said, Grim, there would be, like, leaves burned or something. Something, yeah. yeah I mean, you know. I don't care how green a tree is. If you got a... Bit, uh, Hot enough fire, it's going to burn it, okay? Maybe yeah. not as quickly, but it will burn. Right. Eventually. Right. I mean, and like I said, you know, the uh, the bark would have been scarred at least, I mean. Right, or blackened or something. Something, but no. But they just look like they're untouched. Like, like okay, you see the burned ground, and then like 10 feet away, you see this tree, and it looks like it's not even touched. Right. It's weird. It's weird. It looks weird. Okay, I, right. I you know I don't know. Yeah, I don't but. know either. Okay, well, I have this just to piss you off. Okay. <laughs> Great, man. On the free thought project dot com. Mhm. Innocent seventy-four year old grandmother strip searched in public. After cops claimed to smell weed. Oh, God. So they claimed to smell weed, and the 74-year-old woman, they decided to go ahead and strip search her in public. Uh, Jamestown, Tennessee. A a stop for an alleged traffic violation and turned into a nightmare for 74-year-old grandmother when the police officer conducting the stop claimed to have smelled a plant. Because the police state claims the authority to violate innocent grandmothers over plant smells, the officer involved will face no punishment, and now the taxpayers will be held liable instead. Phyllis Tucker, 74, is now suing the city of Jamestown in Fentress County, claiming the city police and county sheriff's uh, departments have illegal policies involving the use of strip searches. Uh, Tucker tells the reporters that the incident, which unfolded earlier this year, has left her and her family traumatized, and rightfully so. According to the lawsuit, Tucker was forced to pull down her pants and remove her bra in the parking lot of a fast food restaurant as bystanders watched. If it wasn't for my mother, I would never go back to Jamestown, never. And I would would not advise anybody else to go through there either, Tucker said. Uh, Tucker was visiting her mother that night. She had her grandson, his girlfriend, and an infant in the car uh, when the cop pulled them over and claimed to smell weed on her grandson's girlfriend, uh, Kira Smith, 19. Instead of simply letting his family go, who had harmed absolutely no one, the cop escalated the situation to what amounts to a public roadside sexual assault. all All to search for a plant. According to the lawsuit, officers from Jamestown Police and Fentress County Sheriff's Department 
strip searched the two women in public view. According to the suit, Smith was ordered to pull down her pants to her knees, and Tucker was told to remove her blouse and bra, exposing her breasts to the public. I just started crying. I was humiliated. I, I didn't know if there was somebody who was going out on the street that was seeing me with my top off, Tucker said. Uh, the lawsuit states, states forcing both men and women to strip on the side of the road is a common practice by law enforcement in Fentress County. What the County. hell? It's a custom. It's the custom of Fentress County to conduct these type of strip searches, said Attorney Wesley Clark. <laughs> uh, anyway, they eventually did find uh, some little amount of weed on somebody there in the car and uh, whatever. Who cares? Uh, who cares if that, that car was full of weed? That is that is just wrong. Uh, it just it strip searching people on the side of the freaking road. Um, wow. It, now at least this one isn't as bad as the one I think it was in Texas or Arizona. Might have been New Mexico. I don't know where where they actually did cavity searches on the side of the road. Basically, basically doing rapes on the side of the road. Oh my God! To look for oh, we smell a plant. We're we're gonna get you. We're gonna find you, you evil criminal. You <laughs> you you're having a good time. We that's not allowed. Not allowed. Not freaking allowed. Not unless we approve of it. And we don't. We we and we don't. We don't approve of the plant. So. Yep. Just the one plant. You know, all the other plants are fine. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just this one that we really don't like it. Yeah. Like, whatever. Exactly. Anyway, you probably heard about this next story sometime this week, but uh, okay. here it is. Venus phosphine find. Unexplained, yeah, about it. unexplained gas hints at the potential for alien life. Uh, scientists have spotted something unexpected in the cloud checks of Venus, our nearest planetary neighbor, while no one is saying it's aliens just yet, I'm not saying it's aliens, but uh, it's aliens. <laughs> anyway, so, some sort of alien microorganism, microorganism uh, is on the list of potential explanations for why a chemical that should not be floating around above the planet has been observed there for the first time. Yeah, I'm not saying it's aliens. Um, <laughs> the chemical phosphine, or PH3, a compound made up of phosphorus attached to three hydrogen atoms. Uh, on Earth, certain microbes that thrive in oxygen-free environments, like at a sewage plant, are believed to produce the chemical. The gas is highly toxic to human humans and smells like decaying fish. Oh, lovely. Uh, it was identified in observations of Venus made through telescopes in Hawaii and Chile in 2017 and 2019. That's why we just hear about it now. Specifically, phosphine was found about 33 to 39 miles uh, above the surface of Venus, a world that is known for being brutally inhospitable, to humans anyway, uh, with both extremely hot temperatures and crushing pressures. Interestingly, however, the altitude where the phosphine was detected is one of the more hospital hospitable areas in the solar system beyond Earth, with temperatures and pressures comparable to the surface of our planet. See, they only look at things as they, if human life can exist there. That's the only way they consider that life could exist there, if human, human life could exist there. They don't even think about other forms of life, um, which there, there could be all kinds of different, you know, non-carbon-based well, uh, yeah. forms of life. They don't even look at that. If it's no. not if it's not something where a human could live, they don't consider it. Anyway, um, Venus. I, I've seen uh, movies about Venus. Women from Venus. I saw <laughs> Venus tonight in the sky. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. It it is the next brightest object after the moon. It's the what? The next brightest object after the moon. Right. It's very bright. It looked orange when I saw it. Yeah. It's really yeah. pretty. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Hey, aliens, how's it going? Yeah, I guess send some of them Venus women over. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man. All right, we're going to do another set here. Okay. And uh, we'll be back after this. We will. Knock on wood. Enjoy.
and sing along if you know the words. Oh, yeah. It's nice stuff right there, let me tell you. Besides the uh, amazing guitar work and excellent vocals, that song has some terrific lyrics. That's Billy Strings doing Watch It Fall there. Yep, 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 very nice stuff. Uh, before that, we had Walter Trout, brand new one there from Walter. Uh, just came out uh, Wednesday. Uh, Ordinary Madness is uh, the name of that, Walter Trout. And we kicked it off there with Jean Lejoy doing High as Fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah, Freakers Classic. Have you ever been? <laughs> I have. I have to, yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. And we'll so be again. Oh, and, and, and we'll be again. Ho- yeah, hopefully. <laughs> and speaking of, Whoa. for all you mushroom enthusiasts out there, shroom heads, the Amanita muscaria fly agaric mushroom uh-huh. are in season right now. Lovely. And you can find them, but you got to really know what you're doing. But I'm just saying, they're out there right now at this time of year, from September to, like, November. If you live in the right area um, with the right conditions. Yeah, but they're all over the country, Graham. Well, they don't grow so much in the desert. No, not in the desert. Mostly in, like, forested areas. So, yeah, yeah you're you're correct there. Yeah. Anyway... I don't know how much research you guys have done, like, the true meaning of Christmas and true traditions of Christmas. Um, before it was Christmas, before when it was Yule, U-Y-L-E. Why, why U-L-E? Oh, why? Yeah. I was thinking <laughs> U-B, I don't know. Anyway, um, the true Santa Claus was a dude in Norway or something, in Scandinavia. Uh-huh. And then around Christmas time, he would bring oranges for the kids, and he would bring these uh, fly agaric amanita muscaria mushrooms for the adults. Yeah. And the reason they figured out that these mushrooms were hallucinogenic uh-huh. is because they saw reindeer eating them, because reindeer love them. Okay. And they saw these deer and reindeer and all these other, you know, and the deer were like, every time they ate them, they'd be like acting like they were drunk. Yeah. So they figured out that it was these mushrooms. Anyway, um, it's kind of funny because the U.S. Forest Service actually has an article on these. (laughs) Hang on a second. Okay. Hmm. I had to cough for a second. <laughs> All right. Anyway, here you go. I'm just surprised that, I mean, it does even say, in the old world, the psychoactive fly agaric mushroom, Amanita muscaria, has been closely, closely associated with Northern European and Asiatic shamans and their rituals. Researchers have documented its use or presumed use by numerous cultures throughout Europe and Asia. In Siberia, its use predates the crossing of the Bering Strait in North America. During the Pleistocene, I think that's how you say it. Pleistocene? Pleistocene, I think. Okay. The use of fly agaric entered Alaska, spread out across North America, and eventually south into Mesoamerica. However, the use of the fly agaric mushroom fell by the wayside in the New World, due to the availability of liberty cap mushrooms, psilocybin. Liberty caps became the preferred psychoactive fungi as they were more easily tolerated and produced more intense experiences. So these are, are they are hallucinogenic, but apparently they're not as hallucinogenic as quote-unquote magic mushrooms. But this is what the, the shamans would bring to people around Christmas time. Excuse me. 33 users, how much Sonic is that? What does that mean? What? Oh, and then never have people in the channel? Oh, yeah, like that's planned. <laughs> 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 yeah, we planned that, dude. 
No. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, this article here goes on to explain its influence on modern midwinter and Christmas celebrations. Why does Santa Claus wear a red coat and pants trimmed with white fur and black boots? Why does Santa come down the chimney and in the house to deliver his gifts? Why do reindeer pull Santa's sleigh? Why does Santa carry his gifts in the sack? Why does Santa have such rosy cheeks? Because he's trippy. Because he's toasted. <laughs> anyway, if you guys look up the history of this, you'll see a lot of Christmas cards, show these mushrooms, a lot of ornaments have been made in the shape of these mushrooms. I mean, this tradition goes way back, dude. Yeah. Okay? And you can find them in North America. Okay? Yeah. You just make sure you do your research because... In some places they're red, in some places they're yellow, in some places they're kind of an orange color. But they all usually have that those white spots on them on the top. Oh, right. yeah, I posted it. Okay, good. Yeah, you okay. did. So anyway, it's just kind of interesting. I was like shocked. I'm like, holy shit. Santa Claus was derived from fucking <laughs> people, the reindeer tripping on mushrooms. And the shamans found out that that's what they were doing. And so the shamans would go house to house, you know, around Yule time and deliver these, like, packages to these people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they knew that mushrooms helped with, like, depression and shit like that. Right. And it helped. I mean, what else was there to do back in that day? It was, like, really r rural and really archaic, you know. It wasn't modern, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's what they did. I don't know. Cool. Thank you, Carl. Yes, Billy Strings. You guys check out Billy Strings. It's a band. And we call them BMFS. That's the, the a lot of people refer to them as that. To them as that. And that means Billy motherfucking strings. That's why we <laughs> call them BMFS. Yes, Carl. They would see these reindeer... They wouldn't really fly. They would, like, jump or They would eat these mushrooms, and they would, like, jump around and do weird shit. Like, you know what I mean? But they didn't actually fly. Like, they'd jump into the air, but they weren't flying. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's where it all came from, though, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's where that whole reindeer, flying reindeer shit came from. They were tripping on mushrooms. The, the reindeer were. <laughs> or, or if you listen to Cheech and Chong, there's a little... Little magic dust for Rudolph, a little magic dust for Santa. There you go. If you, if you know the Santa and his old lady thing. Anyway. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> we play it every year at the Christmas. Uh, anyway, um, okay, and so what, here's another article I found today. Okay. Eating them, I mean, they're not hard to re, um, recognize. So that's one good thing. Like, you can't. It's hard for you to get them mixed up with any other mushroom that could be poisonous. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. But anyway, here, it, it, I like this, the head of this article, eating Santa's shroom. <laughs> 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 and so anyway, there you go. There's one guy's uh, account of his journey into Amanita muscaria mushrooms. I, I read I read a lot of I read most of it. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I that's mean, cool. Yeah, so there you go. But um, no, No peeling required. Right, you just, but you should, you're supposed to cook them or something. So I would just do your research before you take one. <laughs> you could be on a trip for days, I don't know. Absolutely. <laughs> but anyway, do your research so you know what the hell you're doing. Okay, we've got a few quick hitters here to, to do. All right. Cover. Okay. Uh, this first one is on futurism.com. To train Train <laughs> to train better AI. Scientists are studying your weird tweets. Oh yeah, they are. Yeah. So one one of the biggest challenges for language processing and artificial intelligence is figuring out the underlying underlying meaning of slang, colloquialisms, and intentional misspellings. In order to help those hapless machines out, a team of mathematicians from the University of Vermont started to analyze how young people deliberately stretch words when they type. For instance, they've quantified the semantic difference between stretched words like ha-ha and ha-ha-ha, and hopes that future AI algorithms 
can learn to understand us in informal ways that we communicate online. In their research, the uh, published Wednesday in the journal PLOS1, uh, the team analyzed the so-called stretchable words that appeared in 100 billion tweets posted over the past eight years. Then they came up with two measurements, uh, the balance and stretch. For example, LOLOLOL has a high balance value. Why, no, doesn't because one letter is repeated. This could that that could help algorithms and future historians understand that dude refers to a person while dude is synonymous with yikes. <laughs> Ultimately, the researchers argue that our dictionaries don't reflect the way people actually communicate, and un <laughs> understanding the stretched words as common on social media uh, could fill an important knowledge gap. We're here to, we, we were able to comprehensively collect and count stretch words like go and ha 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 ha, the, the researchers said in a press release, and mapped them across two dimensions of overall stretchiness and balance of stretch while de developing new tools that will also aid in their continued linguistic study and in other areas such as language processing, augmenting dictionaries, improving search engines, analyzing and construction, the construction of sequences, and that uh, boy. Dude! <laughs> uh, oh, so, yeah, really, that would be a really smart AI that you could under, understand that. Wow. Okay, this is a more serious situation one here. Um, I'm not even sure when this came out. Uh, but basically, it, de it delves into state crimes, crimes of the state, by the state, okay. not against the state. Um, and, and it's got a lot of serious research going on in it. Uh, but just to give you a little bit here. State crimes are crimes committed by governments. Uh, they were defined by Penny Green and Tony Ward in 2005 as illegal or deviant activities perpetrated by or with the complicity of state agencies. Of course, state agencies generally create the laws of their countries, and while governments may break their own laws, it is more likely the case they are breaking international law or their actions should be seen in a term of terms of transgressive criminology causing harm rather than breaking the law. A wide range of state crimes may be considered. Uh, these can include corruption, kleptocratic regimes robbing their own populations, or human rights abuses, including very extreme acts such as the Rwandan genocide or ethnic cleansing in the former Yugoslavia. State crimes include, but are definitely not restricted to, corruption, discrimination, funding terrorism, funding organized crime, war crimes, torture, assassination, genocide. Now, the article goes on a good bit. Uh, I, we, my, me and Cirque covered some of this oh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, on uh, It's All Connected. But it's it's a good reference document that you can show to people that think that the government is just these loving, wonderful folks. Uh, it's posted. Yeah, yeah right. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot. Take your dad, for example. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, he he believes in the state. He trusts the state. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, he needs to consider uh, more things. Then. Right. Well, people, you know, when you get to a certain point in your life, I think, I don't know what you, I don't know. I mean, I don't, if, you, if you're if you still alert and, you know, aware and everything, um, you should be able to see different things. Old dog do tricks kind of thing? I don't know. Is that is that possible? I don't know. I mean, my dad was in the military. You know right. what I mean? Right, right. So it's kind of like hard to get that out of somebody, you know? Sure, sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, once you get to a certain age, well, that's not even true. I shouldn't even word it that way because age really has something to do with it. it, it shouldn't. Probably I, mean, I guess not, what I'm trying know. to say, people that have some experience that's different or it, it has to do with your, your upbringing and all that right right yeah and what you know you, you were taught all this crap at school and until you realize that everything you taught was a lie then right you know all right anyway just to close it out here um 
uh, you know, there's all this crap talk about vaccines, getting the vaccine before right, the election, da da da, all, all this nonsense that's going on. Well, yes. here we have it from RT.com. All right. Respected British medical journal The Lancet publishes a study showing Russia's Sputnik V COVID-19 vaccine to be 100% effective. 100%. Really? It's Honor. out there. No vaccine is 100%. Well, whatever. Okay. They, they found that this is against this crap. Okay? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, I, 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 well, either way, for for all this nonsense going on in the U.S. right now about, oh, we got to do this vaccine, we did all this stuff, da, 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 and it's got to be done before the election, or it can't be done by the election, depending on which side you're listening to. It's already out there. It already works. It's already good. It's already functioning. Um, it's, and and, and the, the U.S. certainly will not even recognize it or talk about it or admit it, that the Russians beat them to the punch. And they have this vaccine out there. Oh, I'm sure. But I'm sure that Russia, I mean, I'm sure that Russia's not going to, like, withhold it. No, no, they haven't withheld it. They said anybody that wants this can have it. Exactly. Right. Anybody that wants this. And that's why now the U.S. drug companies are making it. Well, they're not making this. They're making something different. Um, They're making some kind of vaccine. Well, but, well, they're... But how, it's, it's, how do you know it's not the same one? Though? Well, I, 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 well, I don't know. But this one's out there. It's been tested. It's working. It's fixing people. And the Russian one, you mean? Yeah, the Russian one. Okay. Well, this is where the U.S. got it from. Well, whether that's where they got it from or not, who knows? But um, I'm just saying that all this nonsense going on in the U.S. about With this oh, vaccine. yeah, I know yeah, this, this big vaccine thing. It's already out there. It's already working. It's already great. So in Russia. <laughs> Well, and, and they've they've lent it to a bunch of other countries, and the countries are oh, using okay. it. People are using it. The U.S. won't even talk about it. Well, they're talking about it because they want to be the ones that say we are get we're making our own. Right. Yeah. They so, want to make it seem like they're doing it when they probably got the fucking shit from the, the Russians. Who knows? Anyway. Who knows? I got don't our, know. We got to do our last set here, so here we go. Okay. All right. Great too. It's, it's so messed up. Oh, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I think so fucking so. yeah. messed up. All right. <laughs> All right. Enjoy, people. Oh, Black Betty, indeed. <laughs> That's uh, Soil. Soil doing their version of Black Betty. Before that, we had the Dead South, and hell, I'll be in good company. The video there, the Worldwide Dance Party Edition. Very fun stuff. And we kicked it off with uh, Playing for Change, covering Bob Marley's One Love, featuring Mano Chao. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's all great stuff. Good stuff. Oh, yeah, man. I tell you. I love the fan participation videos. Oh, yeah. Because people are doing this stuff during this crazy time, and they're getting all creative and everything, and they're going all out and doing, you know what I mean? It's really cool. Right, right. And like in, in that uh, Dead South video, uh, as mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, uh, I think uh, Farmer Carl pointed out there, uh, nobody's wearing masks, but, uh, and right. that, that video was only uh, re- recorded or released anyway on August 11th, 2020. So right. uh, if people, I, I don't know, like I said, I don't know when they recorded it, but. Um, no masks, so. <laughs> right. And that, well, the goalie dude in Wisconsin. Well. He had a goalie mask on that yeah. he, like, spray painted with all these, like, looked like a tie-dye goalie mask. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. Yeah. I I know it was Wisconsin, because it wasn't Hudson. It might have been Hudson, New York, maybe. Yeah. But I doubt it. Yeah, they they just say the city and the country. They didn't say right. They didn't say what state. But yeah. anyway, because um, you know most countries don't have a bunch of different little states like we do here. Right, right. All right. Anyway, you know, uh, I noticed for the the England and the Australia, they said where they were. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, anyway, thanks everybody for tuning in. It's been a great time. Yes, thanks so, for tuning in, everyone. Tune in tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern for The Dark Table with Flash Somebody and Graham Z. Uh, I'll be on Sunday morning with the Blues at noon Eastern. Uh, I guess that's morning for me, not for you. 
um, if you're on the East Coast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, Hal Anthony follows me with Behind the Woods in directly after that, after me at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so check him out, and then check the schedule on reallibertymedia.com yeah. for all the other shows coming up on RLM Radio. And if you want to do a show, let me know. All right, you got anything else? Yep. Nope. Okay, then, I guess um, that's going to cover it. Yep. So y'all have yourselves a great weekend, and um, stay away from people. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. Peace.